Good morning, my Nietzsche happy, and welcome back to this. Still not sure what this is, but today I'd like to be topical for once and talk about an anime that's actually airing right now. It's called Sara Zama. It's airing in the spring 2019 anime season for those of you watching this in the future. And it currently has six episodes out at the time of this recording. I'll be covering all six episodes, tons of spoilers ahead, and we're gonna be putting on our tinfoil hats as I kind of discover what I think is gonna happen in the next few episodes, kind of give my thoughts on the show in general. This show is only slated to have an 11 episode run, which I find really quite interesting as typically Typically anime runs about 12 episodes for one core and if you get two core then you're gonna get about 24 episodes so stretching into the next season but this anime only has 11 episodes so I'm guessing they took their budget and crunched it up to get better animation and the animation in this anime is really really well done and I'm gonna talk about the animation a little bit later because I do have some gripes with it but I'm gonna talk about why I got into Sada Zama first why did I binge watch six episodes instead of making videos for you guys well the answer is really quite simple it's the anime opening it's the song Masa Sara by Kana Boom the nostalgia just just hit me like a car when I first heard that song. Reminded me of the silhouette days when I would wake up as a kid, go onto my favorite streaming website and watch the subs for the newest Naruto episode and it would come up with Kana Boom and listening to this song really brought back those feelings and that's what ultimately got me watching this show. It's not that one clip with one of the characters man birthing another character. I know this clip in particular seems to have gotten a lot of traction on Twitter and on social media. People keep retweeting this video or sharing this video on YouTube. It's gotten quite a bit of traction. I, in fact, I think Crunchyroll has has a clip of this posted on their YouTube channel and a lot of people are picking up the show because of the the crazy quirky Japanese-ness but that's not why I picked it up. I picked it up because of the song the nostalgia it's just too strong kind of boom is back but anyway this is an Ikuhara show like when I first picked this up because of the anime opening I didn't know this was directed by Ikuhara by watching the first episode I instantly knew it was him because of the background characters they look just like the background characters in Maoru Penguin Drum in fact it carries on a lot of the aesthetics that he used in Maoru Penguin Drum in this show because I knew it was him I knew this show would touch upon like sexuality and it would have like a much higher theme to it I believe Maoru Penguin Drum talked about like capitalism and how capitalism just takes well-rounded people and turns them into two-dimensional husks whose only goal in life is to keep the economy machine running is to keep the wheel of capitalism turning I think that's what the story is about I granted I watched this when I was really young so I'm just trying to like remember what I remembered about the show, which is not much, but I do remember enjoying it. I, I like the songs. Uh, Triple H is probably one of my favorite in-universe bands out there. Their music is quite good. If you like Sara Zama, you should probably go back and watch Maoru Penguin Drum. It's got the same kind of vibe to it. Well, it is directed by the same guy, so you'll probably like it. Go and check out Maoru Penguin Drum if you like what you see for Sara Zama so far. So I'm going to try and break down what I think is going on in Sara Zama here. Maybe this will all be debunked when the last episode comes out, but this is what I understand is going on. So there's three main characters. We have Kazuki, Enta, Kuji. They enter the cognitive realm to fight these things called kappa zombies. But when they defeat a kappa zombie, their inner thoughts, like their inner secrets are shared amongst themselves. So Kuji's secret is shown to the two other guys and so forth. They each get to find out what their secrets are. And I'm going to go in order of which the show presents them. For Kazuki, his secret is that he's a cross-dresser. He has a little brother and he feels guilty that his little brother is in a wheelchair and is handicapped. He can't move the lower half of his body because he got into a tragic car accident. Kazuki feels indirectly responsible for causing this car accident to happen. And because of this, he's decided to do everything in his power to make it up to his little brother. His little brother really, really likes this idol Sada-chan, so he decided to cross-dress as her, pretend to be her, trick his brother into thinking that he knows the real Sada-chan when it's really just him dressing up as her. Like, this is quite a leap in logic. I don't think a regular person would uh, cross-dress just for their little brother to make things up. Maybe they'd be more of a brother figure, I don't know, maybe do something that's not cross-dressing, but this is anime after all, so he decides to cross-dress to kind of appease his brother, and that's kind of the plot line. And you also find out that he He's not blood related directly to his little brother. I believe in the light novels that's being simultaneously released with this anime, it's explained in more detail that his dad's older brother had an affair with another woman. He's the product of that. And then his dad's little brother took him in with his wife and that's why he's like related but not directly related. And his grandpa pulls like the ultimate dick move on his deathbed. His grandpa goes like, your mom was a whore. Uh, and dies like that those were his last words before dying but i believe in the light novel there's like a scene devoted to his dad coming over and being like hey don't worry about it like we'll work this all out but obviously as like a i think he's like eight or seven year old kid he feels completely distraught by this his whole life was ruined by his grandpa so uh 
Got him. And the next character I'm gonna talk about is Kuji. Kuji straight up killed someone. So that's his like skeleton. Is he straight up killed someone? He uh, it, you could argue it was in self defense. Like that guy was a bad dude. I think that guy was like Yakuza or something. So you could argue that this was 100% self defense. But he was a kid. Like you understand, this kid is like eight years old, and he just straight up killed the guy. So that's gonna leave some mental scars on him. These other characters, Kuji and Kazuki, they have such good characterizations. Like we're given a lot of time to get to know Kazuki and Kuji. We've gained so much time to know what they're going through and when their skeletons in the closet are exposed they're given some time to reconcile the other characters say like hey you know you're cross-dressing that's okay with me or you killed someone that's okay with me I'm not gonna like blow your cover and we'll call the police for your murder I'm not gonna screw you over your life you know I'm gonna accept you and they kind of work over their problems but my boy Ento his baggage is that he is gay for Kazuki I want to say that right now that this love is not pure as uh, the reason why they find out he's gay is because the memories they share after they defeat the Kappa zombie is you see Enta like make out with an unconscious Kazuki and you also see Enta grab a Kazuki's used flute and start making out with it so this love is not pure and uh, those things are wrong like you can love a dude which is fine but that's rape, right? Like, you can't just go out and just kiss some guy when he's unconscious. That That's wrong, okay? I'm pretty sure everyone can agree that's wrong. Once they find out, they kind of just laugh it off. Like, Kazuki just goes, oh man, you made out with me as a joke. That was a joke, bro. Of course, it was a joke. There was no feelings behind it. It was just a joke. And it just hurts, man. Like, every other character, Kuji, Kazuki, they get so much time. They get so much character development. They get so many episodes dedicated to explaining what they're doing, why they're doing it. They get some kind of tragic backstory. But my boy, Enta, he gets his skeletons revealed. He comes out of the closet. And what the other characters do, the other characters just kind of laugh it off. And his character development is so poorly presented like in a show whose writing is actually not too bad especially for anime there's this one scene that i remember where in enta's episode he kind of has this special place that him and kazuki used to train so he's there it's like public domain it's like a public park and him and enta drew kind of a goal post and they used to practice there so these two other random kids walk up and say hey uh we'd like to use this area to practice and then Enta just kind of loses it and says it's his spot. And then for some reason, it quickly devolves into like fist fighting. And these two kids suddenly start kicking Enta for no reason. Things escalated so quickly. Like these kids just walked up and said, uh, we'd like to, we'd like to practice here. And then Enta's just like, no, this is, this is my spot. They just get into a fist fight and then Kuji shows up and scares them off. Like this kind of writing is so bad. This is like those bully help videos that I was forced to watch back in high school. Enta just has zero real character development. He almost feels like a joke character, which kind of sucks. With Kazuki, they accepted that he's a cross dresser. With Kuji, they accepted he's a murderer. But for some reason, they can't accept that Enta is like a homosexual. Is he like a joke character? Is he there just for the Fujos? Is he like fan service? Like there's nothing wrong with fan service, okay? I really enjoy fan service. Uh, maybe not this kind of fan service, but I do enjoy fan service in general and I'm not here to take this away from you but seeing as how every other character so far in the show has been treated with so much respect even the two gay cops have their own spin-off manga and they have so much more character development and their characters are treated with so much more respect but for Enta, Enta's just thrown out to the side like what is he there for? Is he there just for laughs? My point is everyone else has such good character development and he just he just gets thrown to the wayside, man. It's it's not fair. So what I'm trying to say here is, uh, rise up, Enter Bros. Enter Bros. We need to rise up. All right. I know I just mentioned it, but Sarazama actually is released simultaneously with a manga. All the manga chapters are out. I'm talking about a spin-off manga featuring Reo and Manbu, the two gay cops who found out that they're actually married. Uh, they raised Sarachan. That's right. The Sarachan, the idol, was actually raised by these two cops, and they have their own spin-off manga. It's done. You can go read it. I read bits of it. For the most part, it's slice of life, and it doesn't really allude too much to the plot, other than the fact that you find out that Manbu is a zombie at this point, but he dies. But we also find that out at the end of episode six. All right, I'd like to talk about something that I caught when I was re-watching the first episode, okay? So everyone put on your tinfoil hats here. So in the first episode, when Kuji first meets Kazuki, it's kind of insinuated that, that Kazuki was cross-dressing and took the selfie of him and Kuji, which caused like everything to be set into motion. However, when you re-watch episode one, you discover the fact that Kazuki wasn't there. Like the character on screen is the real Sada-chan. You can tell that based on her eyes. The real Sada-chan has kind of like these rainbow effects drawn in her eyes and she wears way more makeup. But when Kazuki cross-dresses, he doesn't wear nearly as much makeup as the real Sada-chan. So, 
did Sara set everything into motion? Like, if you look at these two scenes, they're clearly different. Like, the way Kuji seems to remember things now is different from the way it was presented to the audience. So are we setting up Sara-chan as like, the main person to set everything up? Like, did she set everything into motion? Is she doing this for her two gay dads? Like, is, is this why this is being set up in the first place? I'd also like to take a moment to talk about the animation in Sara Zanmai. The animation is really, really well done. For the most part, the animation is superbly done and I really commend them for how fluid and how what good it looks. However, um, they reuse the same animation over and over and over and over and over again, especially the transformation animation. Uh, I really liked what they did when the first episode, when they when they go to the realm to fight the Kapazami, they use kind of like real life effects and like they head towards like a lantern, head towards a gate using like a, a real life set. And I really, really like this like practical type effect, this really interesting splicing it into the animation. It, it really adds a lot to the character of the show and I really, really enjoyed it. But for all of this stuff, they reuse it like a lot and I mean a lot a lot you're gonna be seeing that one scene where they're like flying around in the water and then they kind of like dab a lot and then they show their uh, skeletons in the, in the closet to each other they like kind of air out their dirty laundry to each other that one bit of animation is reused in every single episode I feel like this is like a budget issue and I'm guessing they took their 12 episode budget and scrunched it down to 11 episodes just to like be able to animate all this stuff because thanks to the light novel that's being released simultaneously with this anime we know that there are some scenes that were cut Anyways, if you made this far, please like and subscribe and tell me in the comments what you thought about Enta, man. Do Enta bros, do we need to rise up? Like, is he there just for fan service or are we finally gonna get some character development in the future? And what was up with the beginning of the episode? Is Sara-chan this next level four-dimensional chess player? Is she the one setting all these things into motion? I'd like to know what you guys think in the comments and I'll see you guys next time.